By the keywords, you should know where to go. And by going to the what first instead of the new card, what trade first? In. The trade in. Now, let me ask you a question. What if you're not quite sure what their keywords are and where to start your presentation? Let me give you a tip. Pop the door, pop the trunk, pop everything that you could pop. Step back, get beside the customer and say, go take a look. Where will they go? What they want. To whatever they want to see. Start wherever they want to start. See, it's not about you. Every year they used to have these Honda walk around champion competitions and I would ask at Honda, I'd say, so how many cars does this guy sell? Oh, he does a great walk around presentation. I see he's got a beautiful suit and a nice mom. I know he's got a wonderful presentation. He knows the car and the product inside out, but my question to you was, how many does he sell per month? And they wouldn't answer. I said, I can tell you why, he don't sell shit. The reason is he's selling the car. And people are not buying the car, they're buying him. And when his presentation is all about him, it's not about the customer. And I can cut his presentation down by 75% and get 10 times more people to buy. Because all the rest of the stuff is superfluous BS, and they just don't care. Does that make any sense? Tailor it to what somebody wants to do. Communicate like a human being. Otherwise, you're just selling them stuff they don't even know about, they don't care about. It doesn't matter to me whether it's in the side, the beginning, or the front. Go to where they want to go. At the end, I generally pop the door on the passenger side, and I say, here, have a seat. Let me share with you a few things inside. I come around. I get in. I say, what station do you listen to? I set it permanently. And then I say, what's your next station? I have them set the station. Why am I doing this? This is active involvement. They're taking ownership. They're setting everything the way they want. What do you like about this car so far? I put it in gear, I take off. I don't ask, I take off. I get to a comfortable spot, I come around, I pop the door, and I say, your turn. And I get them in, I let them drive. Now, I'm going to share with you something very simple, help you sell a car. I bet somebody will email me this week and tell me this one stupid, silly little idea helped you. Here we go. Let me ask you a question. What's the average length of the test drive you take? <coughs> no right or wrong answer. What's the average length, would you say? 15 minutes. Um, probably 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Anybody go a mile? Anybody go two miles? What's your average? Two. two? Would you say most of you are doing two, three miles on an average test drive, something like that? Three, four? Nine miles. Go back and do this. Try this this week. Take 15 mile test drives. Take 15 mile test drives. Why would I have you do a 15 mile test drive? Why on earth? Find out lots. When's the most peak <laughs> emotional time in a selling process of buying a car? Test drive. Test drive. <laughs> and we're going for a mile, or two miles, or three miles? On the most peak emotional time when their heart transfers from their brain into their heart and logic combines with emotion? And we're spending a mile, two miles, go 15 miles. Okay, somebody said, the price of gas today. I said, so I'm going to cost myself a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar commission for a couple of dollars of gas. Are you kidding me? 15 miles. 15 miles. What will they do in 15 miles that they don't do in two? Get comfortable. Get comfortable. Number one, you ever get in a rental car? How do you feel when you get in a rental car? Like crap. How long does it take you? 15, 20 miles. <laughs> what will they do when they're inside of the car? Talk. What will they talk about? Logic-oriented items. What do you think my payments would be? What would the price be? You know what my trade would be? When you start to hear that stuff, what do you know? They transferred into logic. They made the decision to buy. Now they're telling you, how do you get me there? What else might they do while they're in the car? Make a phone call. Buddies. Phone call? Their buddies. They might say Hey, it's a lifeline. I'll give it to them. Right? What else? They're going to tell you about them. They're going to tell you what it takes for them to do what? Buy a car. That'll happen in 15 miles. I'll guarantee you something. It won't probably happen in two. It won't probably happen in five minutes. It probably won't happen in 10 minutes. It probably won't even happen in 15 minutes. In 15 miles, they're going to start to talk to you about things. Now, when I get in the car and drive, and I start off out on the lot, I tend to talk to them more. When I switch, I'm a little bit more quiet on the second part of the ride. Why? 
this one around. You learn one mode dominant, kinesthetic, auditory, visual. So if I'm bombarding you while you're trying to learn kinesthetically, getting touch, feel oriented, and I'm bombarding you with auditory influence talking to you, your body will shut down one of the influence. It says one's got to stop. And here's the analogy I give you, but it's true. Think about it. You're driving, driving, driving late at night. You can't find a dress. You've got a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend on the side. You can't find it. You can't find it. You can't find it. You get aggravated. And you, what do you do? You reach over and you go, turn that damn radio down. I can't see a thing. Have you ever done that? You turn down the radio to be able to find the address. What does that have to do with you being able to see? Reality is, it has a bunch to do. Because your body is saying, I can't, I'm not good at taking two in, I gotta shut one down to maximize the other. I shut down the auditory and I call my influence and I learn better. Your customer is learning when they buy. So if I can help them learn, I can help them buy. And I can do that by taking 15 mile test drives rather than taking a two mile test drive and trying to make sure the influence that they get is proper. When I come back in, I just say, pull over here, sir, into the sold area, if you would. If they say, I have a bought, I understand, I appreciate that since we're repeat cars where people are considering buying. But if they don't say anything, what do you think? Ka-ching, ka-ching, show me the money, right? If they do pull over, you're in good shape. If they say, well, I haven't bought, I don't understand. 